you probably had a grandma or a granddad that talked about how much money, that, how, how many things they could buy with so few money. So like $5 could get to the picture theater, uh, contribute halfway towards a house, um, and then yeah, you could still buy a diamond ring for your girlfriend. It was that sort of thing. So we're realizing how much our money can buy is decreasing. I built my hopes on mountains high. There was no ceiling to my sky, but I never dreamt you'd fall in love. How many people here have majority of their money in the bank, would you say? Just raise your hands. Okay, cool. So the people in the room, there's something called inflation. And we hear about it, we talk about it at school, but what are the implications for us? So you've got the money in the bank. How much, what's the return, do you think, from the bank, from people's experience? 2%, 3%, small, tiny? So what we talk about in finance is the real return. What are you actually getting? Because let's say you probably had a grandma or a granddad that talked about how much money that how, how many things they could buy with so few money. So like $5 could get to the picture theater, uh, contribute halfway towards a house, um, and then yeah, you could still buy a diamond ring for your girlfriend. It was that sort of thing. So we're realizing how much our money can buy is decreasing. Make sense? So once again, we can use something called the rule of 72, which it tells you how long it will take for your money to halve. So if you divide 72 by the inflation rate, so it's around 2% now, if there'll be 36 years before your $100,000 is only going to be worth 50,000. So that's what we've got to beat, inflation. So the concern with the bank, if you're getting 2 to 3% around that area, inflation is 2%. You get taxed, that's maybe 1%. So, how much is the returns that you're earning? Not much. Yeah, not much, or zero. It's usually between minus one and one. So, you, you can actually lose money having in the bank. Does that get a bit confusing? Like, I'm getting a return, but why am I losing money? Yeah, so just because the money's sitting there, it's not earning more than inflation, so you're actually losing money. So. So one of the ways you can beat that, property, everyone likes property in Auckland. I don't know how many people have a million to buy property in Auckland, but that, that outpaces inflation. Another way to do that is shares. But as we, as we learn, if you just go on one company, it's quite risky, but if you go on many diversified across the world, so like an index fund, then you're just gonna have ups and downs, but not necessarily lose all your money. The other way we earn money is loaning money to people. So that would be banks. You loan them money, they give you interest. Another thing is it's called bonds. So if you loan the government money or a corporation or a local bank, they give you a percentage. So I feel like I should have talked behavioral because I'm starting to put myself to sleep on this one. Um, but just, just on that point, that, that's usually, if you look at your KiwiSaver, it's split up into those four categories. Shares, property, bonds, and cash. And that's how you achieve diversity. Because when shares go up, bonds may not go up. When bonds go up, shares could be going down. So the link between them is quite diversified. They're not that strongly correlated, they say. So because you've got these different pockets, then that protects you against the volatility a little bit more and, and diversifies what you have. So that's effectively how KiwiSaver works.